Hello, my name is Jan Vorberg. I'm the developer of Scriptonome. First and foremost, Scriptonome is an easy to use and reliable metronome. But it doesn't stop there. You can create all sorts of click tracks for your practice sessions or live gigs. And you can even play audio samples for live performances with nothing more than your Android device. Scriptonome offers a high level of customization and is preferable to pre-rendered click tracks with its rich and easy navigation features. In this video, I will cover all the features Scriptonome has to offer and I will give a short explanation on how to use them. So, let's get started. When you start up the app, you will see a list of all your projects and a button to create a new project. Scriptonome offers a lot of features, but sometimes you only need to get a simple loop click running. To do so, swipe to the next tab. Here, you can set up your click parameters easily and hit the play button once you're done. You can change these values while the click is running and it will update on the fly. To change a value, simply click on the respective field, for example the beats, and change the value in the dialog. You can set or tap the beats per minute, you can set the beats per measure as we did before, and the subdivisions, where the T stands for triplets and the D for dotted subdivisions. In the accents field, you can set a higher pitched click for certain beats. I will go with an accent on the first and third beat, for example. So far so good, but nothing really exciting here. So let's have a look at the core features of Scriptonome. Scriptonome content is managed in projects. A project is a list of user-defined click tracks, which will be saved in a text file on your SD card. We will go ahead and create a new project and just enter a name. I will go with my project, you can obviously pick any name you want. When you long press on a project, you will get a pop-up with a few options. You can of course open it, you can edit the underlying script, you can delete or rename the project, and you can create a copy of it, which can be useful sometimes. I won't do any of that because I'm quite happy with the project name, so I will close the pop-up and just open the project by clicking it. This is the metronome view. A newly created project will always contain some sample script to get you started. What you can already see is a sort of media player with a play, forward and back button and a timeline. The list in the middle is a list of parts that your song can have. So when you press an item, the player jumps to the beginning of that part. This is quite useful when your bandmates tell you to start a complex song at the second chorus, no more fiddling with the click track just the press of a button. But how does that work? Let's take a look at the editor. To go to the editor, press the pencil button in the upper right corner. In the editor you can see that the sample script consists of two tracks. The tracks are listed in their playing order. You can change the order of the tracks by using the drag handle on the right. To delete a track, just swipe it out of the list. You can undo any action with the undo button. And you can save your project with the save button. To add a new item, click the plus and select the type of item you want to add. For now, we will just delete the two preset tracks and we're gonna add a new one. We click the plus and select track. You can pick any name you like, I will call mine the middle for instance. Here we go, there's our track. If you want to rename a track, long press it and you will get a dialog to change the name. Let's have a closer look at the track. 
tap it once to open it and you will see it is empty. To change that we hit the plus again and we add a new line. A line in Scriptonome is basically a sequence of bars your metronome will play. Once it is done playing them, the metronome will jump to the next line. In each line I can define the type of bars I want to play and how many of them I want to play. You can use the play button to pre-listen to the bars once you have set the parameters. We have seen the upper section before in the quick metronome feature. All it does is help you set up the metronome parameters. In the bottom right corner you can set the amount of bars you want to add. I will go with 4. And in the options you can add some extras to your line. You can mute it. Instead of adding a fixed amount of bars you can make it a loop or you can increase or decrease the tempo over time to match the tempo of the next line. When we go back we will see that the track is no longer empty, there is a new line saying that we're gonna play 4 bars at 120 bpm. We are done here, so we go back and we hit save. When we go back to the metronome view, we will see that there is a total of 4 bars to play in our track with the title The Middle. The navigation list we've seen before here in the center is empty though. That's because our track has no parts. We go to the editor and into the track we hit the plus and we add a new part. You can insert a name here, I will go with verse. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it to the top. A part is a navigation marker for your click track. It will show up in the navigation list in the metronome view. Since the part verse is at the top, it will make the click track jump to the first bar. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new part, and I will call it Chorus. Okay. This navigation marker will make the click track jump to the end of the track since there is no following line. We're gonna change that right now. Hit the plus, add a new line, and to show you that it's a new part, I will increase the tempo significantly here. That should do. And I'm gonna go with four bars. The chorus navigation marker will make the click track jump to the beginning of the following line, which is the fifth bar. Now let's save and go to the metronome view. And there it is, our navigation list. Chorus will make the click track jump to the fifth and verse to the first bar. Now that we are done creating our first track, I will show you something cool. Let's go back to the project overview. And we go into a project that I have created earlier with a name Song Library. There's only the two preset songs in here, Smokey the Bear and Muffin Man. That's all there is to see here. Let's go back. Into our own project again. And we go to the editor. We hit add and include. As you can see there is the list of all the projects we have created so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the song library project and I will hit OK. What this is gonna do is tell my project that I'm planning to use content from the song library project. To really copy the content into this project, I will have to add a reference. So plus and reference. And there's the two songs declared in the song library project. 
I'm gonna select both of them and press OK. Scriptonome will search all included projects, in this case the song library, for tracks with the title Smokey the Bear and Muffin Man and copy their content into my project. Let's hit save and go back to the metronome view. There's our song the middle, the first in the list, and when we press next, there's Smokey the Bear and there's Muffin Man. So, if you want to create a set list for a show, for example, you don't have to create your click tracks over and over again. Just declare them somewhere once and then reuse them with include and reference as often as you want. Some bands make use of background samples. These samples have to be in sync with the click track, of course. So, the easiest way to realize that with Scriptonome is to play the samples in the app itself. In the root folder of your Scriptonome installation, there is a samples folder. Scriptonome will recognize every WAV file you put in there. Make sure this WAV file has only one channel and is 16 bit encoded. Once this is set up, you can go into the editor and open a track. Hit add and select sample. This will give you a list of all the files that you have in your samples folder. I have a simple synth track here. I press OK. I want it to start right at the beginning of the song The Middle, so I drag it to the top. I hit save and go back to the metronome view. Hit play and... Nope, there's nothing. Yet. The last thing I have to do now is to go to the settings and set the right channel mode. To use samples in a live situation, you can use an adapter that splits the stereo output of your Android device into two mono outputs. Scriptonome will then send the sample to one or both channels, and the click will be sent to one side only. Use the click for your in-ear and the sample channel for playback on the PA. I will select the channel mode, click left and sample right. Note that there are also sliders for click and sample volumes. Back to the metronome view, and when I hit play... There we go, the app plays both click and sample, each on their own channel. The scriptonome click is based, who would have thought, on a simple script. You can read and edit the script by opening the project text file. The script is quite easy to understand. Once you get the hang of it, you can even create your projects on any device with a text editor. If you want to look at the script in the app, you can go to the settings and check the legacy editor checkbox. If you go to the editor now, there is our project in plain text form. I hope this video helped you to get started with Scriptonome. If you have any further questions, feedback or if you are missing a feature, feel free to write me an email. Last but not least, I want to thank the early users of this app who helped me a lot with their feedback and suggestions to make Scriptonome an even better metronome application. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy Scriptonome.